think uh, good to go. Yep. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for coming and joining us. Uh, over the past few days, we have seen uh, quite a few presentations and demos around uh, telco NFE use cases using OpenStack and uh, SDN controllers and whatnot. And uh, uh, definitely, if you look at all those presentations and the use cases, it will become clear that there is no single uh, classic cookie cutter kind of a, a deployment model or a classic cookie cutter case of a VNF deployments and so on. Uh, today, we are going to touch upon one particular class of deployment models, which seems to be quite popular in uh, the telco use cases, which talks about deploying the infrastructure in multiple tiers. Okay? And specifically, we'll talk about uh, what we call as micro DCs or headless uh, NFVI, if you will. And these micro data centers are something which actually uh, serve the purpose of a point of presence a data center or maybe a central office or a mobile switching uh, related central office. Okay? I'm Vinod Chegu and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague Rushikesh Gangur. Hi. And uh, both of us are part of uh, NFE business unit inside uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Call back. So here are the topics we're going to cover today, this high level agenda, if you will. I'll start off with a basic uh, requirements description or a problem statement or uh, capabilities expected of this particular uh, micro data centers, if you will. And I'll talk about whether OpenStack actually helps in meeting these requirements or not in its current form. I understand there are also projects which are in progress here. And then uh, I'll turn it over to my colleague, uh, uh, Rushikesh, who will talk about the, some of the alternative mitigative plans and also talk about some of the open items and uh, topics and open it up for basically a more interactive discussion at that point. So basically, as I mentioned earlier, like there are quite a few telco use cases which require this so-called multiple tiers of NFVI or NFE infrastructure. So at the top, I have a very, uh, on, side, on the left-hand side, I have a pretty simplified version of uh, uh, the multi-tier architecture. We have basically a main data center typically deployed in a very, very large footprint. And it has uh, you know, a full-fledged uh, uh, control plane with HA, a full-fledged SDN control plane with HA, a lot of storage and top-of-rack switches and spine switches and back, back-end switches and so on. And the compute footprint is somewhere in the order of thousands of computes. Okay? Then we have in the second tier, basically what we call as micro data centers. Now, these micro data centers, as I mentioned earlier, are the ones which serve the purpose of point of presence or uh, uh, central offices or mobile switching offices and so on. Now, they have pretty serious constraints with respect to space, power, and cooling. And typically, you see the size of these micro data centers anywhere from half a rack, single rack, maybe a couple of racks of servers. Uh, and when you have such smaller footprint cloud deployments, Right, or at least in data centers, you, th th there's, a, there's, a, there's a discussion which happens about uh, what is the upfront cost in setting up the minimal micro DC. Wherein I want to point out that basically what is the ratio, ideal ratio of having uh, control plane servers versus compute at that, uh, at that particular micro DC. For example, it's, there's no point in having seven or 11 servers uh, just serving your OpenStack as well as uh, uh, Ceph cluster or, for that matter, uh, SDN controller plane and so on, trying to serve, let's say, three or four compute servers. So the upfront cost becomes uh, critical. Then, of course, uh, the main data center is uh, separated from the micro DCs over the WAN. That means they're geographically distant, distant. And you could have up to a few dozen or maybe a few hundreds of these micro data centers driven from the main data center. And I've also shown a few uh, customer edge uh, related uh, uh, devices there, which typically are driven from the point of presence or something like that. Those could be computer, uh, sorry, uh, customer pro provider edge equipments, uh, pretty small form factor ones, and there could be thousands of those. And or it could be driving, the micro DCs could be driving base towers in a mobile you know, tower and so on. Now, between the main data center and the micro DC, you need to guarantee certain amount of bandwidth and latency. And typically, what we've seen is service providers and telco uh, uh, customers 
are okay with providing that level of guarantees and QoS levels and so on. The other problem we need to basically make sure is when we actually have this multi-tier architecture, how do we actually go about maintaining, managing, actually start with provisioning, maintaining, managing this entire uh, array of uh, uh, micro DCs, if you will, right? So how do you do upgrades, right? The, 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 we heard in other talks earlier that upgrade is one of the very serious issues in such kind of large deployments. Now, in addition to these set of, what shall I call it, problem statements or you know, challenges, just because VNFs are getting deployed in these micro data centers doesn't mean that all the typical things which we expect, the VNFs expect, are going away. We do need predictable performance. Thanks to the community over the past year and a half, there has been considerable progress in enhancing the, uh, what, what we call as EPA-related features, which ensures that you have predictable performance. Things like NUMA affinity, IO affinity, huge pages, and uh, uh, CPU pinning, and so on. There's also been a lot of progress made, in, in the, as it's mentioned, mentioned in the previous talk, about having a real-time stack, essentially having a real-time hypervisor, and, and of course the real-time kernel, host kernel, and setting all of those things up to ensure low latency, low jitter, at the same time using DPDK-enabled vSwitches or SRIOV to get the maximum line rate throughput performance. Another topic which is nearly very dear to us is basically high availability. We also had a lot of presentations during the summit. We talked about high availability. Now, th this high availability topic, you know, we also know that, okay, the, the, the OpenStack control plane solves the problem through various mechanisms. And the problem shifts to how do we ensure high availability of the VNF applications? And in that context, we have seen, uh, we, we have, we, 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 the basically the problem boils down to uh, having a very low latency fault detection of either a VNF failure, a vSwitch failure, a NIC failure, or a compute node failure, and making sure the appropriate entities in the stack get notified very quickly. And then the VNF managers have the choice of making the appropriate, taking the appropriate uh, decisions of either you know, restarting or whatever, or failing over to a standby and things like that. Optionally, you can also have auto-remediation or auto-recovery features if that is something which the VNF managers request. Of course, when we have a multi-tier uh, architecture, we want to have VNFs which are actually deployed in the micro DCs to avoid having these round trips back to the main data centers to satisfy you know, uh, the networking related needs or requirements, like how do I get the floating IP address? How do I get the L3 and L2 connectivity? Again, I, I, in the previous slide I listed about a more like a VCP kind of a use case. Other examples of uh, real world telco use cases are like the VEPC and VRouter and VRAN. I'm sure there are a lot more like that. So now let's go over and see how does OpenStack try to meet these requirements. And when I'm going to talk about these, I'm going to assume two different use cases, or rather two different uh, possible approaches, if you will. Okay? The first one will basically talk about having uh, each micro DC be a whim of its own. So, that's, so you can think of it as you know, 100 different whims being controlled by a main data center, which is a whim. Okay? That's, what are the challenges if we do it that way? If you do it that way, well, basically, you end up with having this issue of control plane footprint. How do you manage the control plane footprint at each of these uh, micro DCs? There have been quite a few projects and interesting progress made in that front. I believe there are cases where they have virtualized the control plane, they have containerized the control plane, and so on. And that's one area which will definitely evolve and definitely help that particular use, use case. The other case is basically, how do we actually do the centralized management? Uh, it's not just about upgrades, which is, by the way, a very critical topic. The other topics are, okay, you have each of these whims. They're all generating logging and monitoring data. How do you co coalesce across all these whims and try to make sense of that? And also, you have SDN controllers giving out information, various logs, and so on. Again, those need to be coalesced, too. Then, of course, if you take the one level higher than the whim, you have the, in the manual layer the NFE orchestrator, and it has to now manage multiple endpoints. And it comes by the various issues like how do we globally do the quota management, resource management, and how do you present a single dashboard? All of these are topics which are, some of them have solutions, some of them don't yet, and they're still evolving. And of course, once you have these WIMs separated, how do you ensure that you have the appropriate overlay networks across these WIMs so that VNFs can do appropriate communication or you can have proper L2 extensions, broadcast domains, and whatnot. The other approach is basically headless micro DC, wherein we talk about having each of these micro DCs 
without a control plane. And the main control plane actually sits in the main data center or otherwise known as mothership data center. What are the challenges if you did it that way? Well, think of it as basically extending the VIM, uh, the, this is the main data center, and you're extending the compute nodes to farther away. Okay? And what are, the, what are the challenges in that particular approach? Obviously, I already talked about bandwidth guarantees and latency guarantees. And other thing is basically you want to make sure there's a proper L2 connectivity between the two so that you can actually do things like, you know, uh, b basic pixie bootings and uh, downloading images and so on. Of course, some of the things, if you do, if you do, we do end up with this kind of an ar architecture, if you will, or an approach, then you'll have to limit the data transfers between the, uh, uh, between the uh, main data center as well as the micro data center. What are the typical uh, type of actions which will probably trigger that? Things like image copy uh, while launching, right? You don't want to be going to the glance in the main data center and trying to uh, download it. Then things like chattiness. You have RabbitMQ, MySQL cluster, and so on. And you don't you want to have too much of chattiness between the control plane uh, in the main data center and the compute nodes. Of course, there are some VNFs which are happy to use local storage. They are stateless. We're also hearing there are other use cases where the VNFs do need to be stateful. And so that, that means that basically they need to have using block storage for booting and mounting and so on. And in those scenarios, uh, you would want to not have your cinder back volume sitting in the main data center and you're trying to load off of that WAN. Of course, uh, these VNFs do need uh, basic uh, L3 and FIP connectivity, and they should be avoiding multiple trips to the main data center. And of course, we already talked about logging and monitoring. Now, if we want to do low latency monitoring of the VNFs and the health of the, uh, health of the compute nodes or things like that, that's of course the challenge if you have a lot of latency. Now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Rishikesh. He will talk about uh, some of the mitigation plans. Hey, thank you, Vinod. So when this problem statement came to us, uh, we, we started thinking about let's push for having an uh, independent VIM on each uh, micro DC location. That's the simplest approach, and let's do it. And we went back to operators and say that what, what they will say about this. So they were very much interested in having a headless compute. So let's start with this, and if you have any issues, then we can, we can uh, talk about the ultimate solution as a separate VIM per, uh, per micro DC. So what we did is, for an experimental purpose, we simulated this environment, and we started uh, stretching out the compute node uh, to the micro data center simulation mode. And then we started figuring out that what are the hot spots, what are the uh, areas where the things will start breaking. And so therefore, we uh, even started talking with telco operators that, okay, we can go with this approach, but there are certain prerequisites that you have to meet. And if, if those prerequisites are met, then we can go ahead with this particular uh, uh, project and understand the complications here. So the first mitigation plan we thought about and we came up with some solution is to go with uh, SDN-based solution. I mean, as, as Vinod was pointing out that, Stock OpenStack, if you take, uh, there are a certain set of limitations, challenges, and doing, uh, doing the communications over WAN. So we took the SDN solution, um, this, it's our own H, uh, HP's DCN solution, and we started evaluating that using this, and with prerequisites like uh, networking requirement, which we'll be discussing is, uh, if those are met, can we meet this particular headless compute node requirement? So here is what we came up as a prerequisite. The first one is we need an L2 extension from a mothership DC to a micro DC. A typical example is a VPLS. So when we discussed this, they said, yeah, we already have such infrastructure between uh, the mothership DC and micro DC, so you don't have to worry about this. So it will be given on, uh, on the day one. Then we talked about, okay, so what are the bandwidth requirements between these two uh, centers? So the bandwidth requirement based on our experiments is, is at minimum 2 GB, but it can, I mean, if it's 10 GB, it's great. I mean, we ideally need a LAN type of environment. So we went through the, uh, some experiments about what type of uh, uh, transfers are happening between, uh, between the mothership DC and a uh, uh, compute node. So what we figured out is glance, there are logs uh, going here and there, and there are certain uh, workloads which actually, uh, for, for example, if there is a monitoring of VM going on, so, but that is like more of chattiness. So we will discuss in the next topic about where the latency matters a lot. 
So then we uh, simulated the latency between these two endpoints and we stretched from 10, 20, 30 and up to uh, 100 milliseconds and we start seeing that, okay, at 80 milliseconds start, things started breaking. So what, what exactly started breaking is the communication between uh, these services, inter-service communication, because all of these uh, inter-service communication is happening through RabbitMQ and database updates are going on. There are some timeout values, default timeout values, um, and then uh, there, there are some communication between the, the SDN directory services to the SDN controller. So we ended up uh, coming to a point that, oh, if I start uh, putting in these hotspots, like control interface or data interface, I would say that I, won't, I can't stretch more than this. So let's set this as a prerequisite for our telco operators that if they can give this, we can really stretch out our computes to, uh, to the macro DC. Then the next prerequisite was, okay, we can do this, but now how to install the compute nodes? I mean, you can do that. I mean, we typically observe that uh, a compute node in such a uh, situation can take up to an hour to get deployed because it's doing a pixie boot over the van and getting the images from the deployer nodes which are running on the mothership data center. So we thought about let's, for now, assume that a pre-installed compute node is shipped to the micro DC. I mean, yes, we can do that. So a set of compute nodes were shipped to those micro data centers and they were already having some cached images. So that way you're not doing any cache images uh, on, on the, uh, you're not doing any image copy on the fly whenever you're booting a VM. So these cache images are mostly the most frequent images, which will be typically the VNFs. Uh, and that, that way we reduce the data transfer between these two endpoints. Then, as Vinod was mentioning some time back about uh, the uh, requirement of persistent data. So I can't always write all over the van to some uh, mothership uh, storage array. So if we can localize the storage array and we can make a prerequisite that, okay, a storage array is running on the micro DC. Uh, in, in the micro DC uh, center. So that way, um, when I will be creating a volume, it will be vo the volume uh, orchestration is happening through Cinder, will be happening on the local, uh, local to that compute node. So that way, the VMs are going and writing locally and so st storing the data persistently. And needless to say, I mean, we have solved the compute problem. We have solved the uh, uh, storage problem. It comes to networking. So the networking here, uh, was a, was a requirement that if we could use a hardware VTAP, which reduces again a certain nodes for your uh, gateways, right? So you can use a hardware VTAP so that top of the rack switch also acts as a, a, a floating IP gateway or a, a, a VXLAN to VLAN gateway. So that way, if these few requirements, if prerequisites are met, we can come up with a, a logical diagram of how the, uh, the logical diagram of how exactly it will look like. So here, if you see that, uh, on the right-hand side, um, there is a, a mothership data center. And this mothership data center is turning, running a typical, uh, all the components like OpenStack controller, SDN service directory, SDN controller, monitoring and logging. Uh, there is a floating IP L3, L2 gateway, and a bunch of compute nodes, which typically a data center will have. Uh, there is a local storage to each of these compute nodes. And plus, there is a storage array for uh, persistent data. The orchestrator is running on the, in the, micro, in the uh, mothership data center, and it's orchestrating uh, the multiple n number of micro DCs here, uh, sorry, mothership DCs here, and also at the same time it is programming the, or it's sending the uh, uh, requests to the micro DC through the mothership data center. On the left-hand side, you will see that we have used here the minimal uh, footprint uh, for compute storage and network. This is just a set of compute nodes which are either enabled with SRIV interfaces for high throughput or line rate performance and V switches to provide the local routing and switching. So it's not like for every uh, networking uh, request, it has to go to get DHCP IP from mothership DC or it has to get uh, uh, getting to the external network it is going out and going to the mothership data center and then going out. So we tried confine, confining everything to the same within the micro DC the network's going out directly to the POPs, uh, to the CPEs, uh, so, and, and the, the, the bunch of CPEs which are connected to this is very at a closer proximity. So uh, here, now let me uh, play some uh, use cases where, okay, now I'm going to launch a VM. So where exactly it will go to? Now, the, the, the tax which we have used here is availability zone. So availability zone uh, is indicating that it's a micro DC. So micro DC is set of 
compute nodes which are sitting in this micro DC data center. So that way, when I launch a VM I will, to, through the orchestration, I launch a VNF through an orchestration, I will ensure that the scheduler picks up the availability zone called as micro DC, and the VM gets launched here. When we are attaching a persistent storage, where we are creating a volume with a volume type micro DC, so that means whenever a volume type is micro DC, it's going to, the Cinder uh, services running on the, uh, on the mothership, in the mothership data center, is going to create volume in, in the micro DC. So this way, your VM and the persistent data both are uh, locally, uh, on, uh, locally installed in that particular micro DC, and at the same time, your SDN controller is programming the V switches, and it's also programming the top of the rack switch for providing you uh, an external connectivity to the world. So looking into this uh, aspect, uh, we kind of I mean, examined all the combinations and it, we found out to be uh, a, a good one. And when we started thinking about scale and uh, the other requirements, so we started evaluating that, okay, let's compare this with uh, another mitigation plan wherein we can come up with a, a reduced footprint for control plane instead of uh, having a full fledged So this was one mitigation plan where uh, we discussed, we, we ensured that there's no control plane here, but still the, the open items which we'll discuss in the last slide, there are certain open items which we want to highlight. So in the next mitigation plan, um, what we did is, uh, before I go there, I'll just show you the physical implementation of this. Um, so this is a typical physical implementation of how uh, uh, micro DC and a mothership DC is there, and you will see that there is a, a VPLS or L2 extension provided by the uh, service provider or a telco the customers. On the left hand side, you will see this is a pod for micro DC, and in this pod, you will see there is a minimal footprint, uh, some storage nodes, and some compute nodes. Uh, the storage nodes can be either it could be a, just a single uh, 4U rack for, uh, for, of a storage area like a 3PAR or any other storage subsystem. Uh, but it could be a commodity ha hardware as well to have a software-defined storage. On the right-hand side, you will see a typical uh, data center where all the, uh, the leaf switchers, spine switchers, routers, central routers, and th they are being used. And on the uh, right-hand side, there are certain components with a minimal footprint here. So as I was discussing in, uh, in an earlier slide about uh, that, okay, uh, this, this looks great. I mean, at the same time, uh, we, we, ha we have a set of prerequisites, right? So not all the prerequisites could be met by certain telco customers. So how we can mitigate those prerequisites and come up with another mitigation plan with, uh, with a reduced control plane? So that, in, that, that started, uh, com that started uh, the indication of having a coexistence of a control plane with a compute. I mean, so if you, if you take a look at this logical diagram, what we are uh, emphasizing here is the control plane as well as the compute node are on the same hardware. And in this particular, uh, uh, on, the right, on the left hand side you will see the micro DC is, uh, is, is, is hosting two nodes which are in active standby mode, controller is in active standby mode, and it is also with compute nodes. But so the way we segregated this is through resources and we dedicated certain resources for uh, platform and certain resources for virtual machines which are running on compute node. You can keep adding multiple compute nodes to that, but your control plane is still confined to those two, uh, first, the first two nodes. Now when we have, uh, so this is exactly a complete VIM here, but in a reduced footprint. So you'll see that there is an a SDN controller also sitting here. So we have our SDN solution which actually can federate across uh, data center. So you have a, a SDN service directory on the right hand side and it has two SDN controllers, one sitting in the micro DC and the other sitting in mothership data center. So that is providing the L2 connectivity even if there are two different separate clouds. So my colleague Nana some time back in, in the previous or day before, uh, she presented something about multi-DC communication. So this is exactly the same uh, communication model happening here, but it's in micro DC. So the other areas which we can reduce footprint on is either you can have the uh, storage array or SDN controller being virtualized. So that is something we are uh, looking forward, which is more like virtualizing this entire control plane rather than coexisting. The next slide which talks about is virtualizing both control plane and our storage. So 
certain telco customers may not be interested in having uh, buying expensive storage area for uh, their persistent data. So why not we use uh, software defined storage here and then virtualize a uh, control plane and the requirement for the storage and put it into a, a common set of nodes. So this comes out as a logical diagram for that and what we have done here is uh, the micro data center is having set of uh, KVM nodes which are actually uh, in a, for, for HA features and they are co-hosting control plane as well as the SDS and the SDN controller. So that way you can find your uh, control plane in just three KVM nodes and all other nodes are your con uh, compute nodes. The remaining stuff uh, like uh, the, uh, the typical communication for L2 connectivity or uh, th there are two separate VIMs so you will have same multi DC solution for uh, L2 connectivity for a network between VMs running on a micro DC and VMs running on uh, the mothership data center. So that is still a way uh, to do this, but it's not solving the entire problem, right? So we have, uh, we have uh, in each of the mitigation plans, we have open items, we have, uh, we have considered some aspects which may not be uh, applicable or which may not be of interest to all the telco customers. So what we, came, what we are discussing now in this particular topic is that there are some open items, there are some projects which are going on, and it's good that we are seeing some traction on those projects. So we will see uh, how we can uh, balance this or how we can address this for each open item. So let's talk about deployment of compute nodes in the micro DC over WAN. I mean, we typically, I mean, there is no open source solution or community, but we can typically use uh, being HP hardware or we can use some certain uh, uh, HP's own features where uh, the images could be uh, shipped to those micro DCs and the images could be attached to ILO if you know about ILO and then it just boots from that uh, image and stores these images. Then, uh, sorry, boots from these images. So that way we reduce the uh, traffic between the, uh, over, over the van. Or the other op option is that if you go with the uh, big C boot of the compute node, I mean, if you're okay with one hour of uh, uh, provisioning of each compute node, that's also fine, but we need to come up with certain uh, way that the, there is a smaller deployer sitting in these micro DC. The second one is about uh, low latency monitoring of the VNFs. I mean, this is a problem statement, yes, because we are doing uh, a, a sub-second detection of VMs in our solution here, and if it goes and stretches out to the micro data center, then this becomes uh, another headache to solve. And that is how we can uh, have some uh, remote uh, uh, detector or remote sensor which can do this detection, fast detection, and send the notification to the mothership data center. So today we are doing through multicast, so we can see that how we can use remote clusters to uh, address this issue. So typical uh, talks you have seen on uh, the pacemaker clusters with the uh, main, cl main and the remote one. So that way it can help here. And there are some other uh, options which are thinking from open SAF side uh, that, that will also address some of this uh, low latency monitoring of the VNFs. The third thing is image offload. So whenever you are launching an image, so I said we have to cache it. So image, it is okay for one time uh, boot or uh, for some uh, uh, duration, but eventually you will start upgrading the VNFs. So in that case, you have to again upload a new image and ship it or uh, send it to the micro data center. So that is again over the van. So is there a way we can do some, some sort of uh, caching offline by uh, doing some other NOAA APIs or some other way that the images are shipped back and this are already cached in the, the NOAA compute nodes? The third, for the fourth thing is about um, iSCSI traffic over WAN. I mean, we, we do mention that, okay, you boot from a local storage that is root and ephemeral, so, so that way you don't have any iSCSI traffic going over WAN. But some VNF requirements are that they are always booting from volume. In, in such cases, you can't avoid uh, iSCSI traffic. So that, that implies that, I mean, we need some or other way to address this. Currently, no, no other solution has, this, uh, no other solution addresses this problem, but we have to th still think about it and how to address this problem. The, uh, the second last bullet is more about uh, the underlay L2, L3 VPN connectivity between DCs. So this was uh, kind of a main requirement because we chose a deployer model which does Pixie deployment and we chose a, a high availability model which actually does multicast and requires a single L2 domain. So 
it can be mitigated. It, we can purely have L3 connectivity, and that way uh, we don't need, really need an L2 extension going over from mothership data center to uh, micro DC. Uh, that is one way to solve it. Um, then the last one is um, limit on number of micro DCs. So how many micro DCs can be attached to a single mothership data center? I mean, it's not a problem about micro DC. It comes finally at the um, number of compute nodes per control plane. And that problem can be solved typically by partitioning your cloud by regions. And each region will have its own control plane, uh, NOVA neutron aspects, so that each region can address a set of uh, micro DCs. That way, you add another region that will be addressing another set of micro DCs. So that particular thing can be mitigated through region concept or having a dedicated control plane. So now let me uh, uh, hand it over to Vinod for discussing on some of the open items related to uh, computes with control plane. Thank you. Thank you, Rishi. <clears throat> so, Rishi talked about the case of a headless computes and all the issues around that. And I had earlier highlighted some of the issues or challenges around having computes with control plane. That is basically multiple little VIMs sitting in each of the micro DCs. And we talked about the footprints and so on. Uh, the thing which we talk about is basically how do we actually come up with a way to manage these multiple clouds? This is still an unsolved problem because we have uh, the question of logging, monitoring, and the question of, okay, how do we actually consolidate all of these information across these various little VIMs and bring it to the main data center and show it in a common dashboard? That's a problem which is still has not been addressed that well, and that's something which we are looking at. And if there are any ideas out there, we'd like to uh, try to hear and try to understand what approaches are there. We'd like to participate in those activities. Uh, and of course, there is this uh, classic problem and a very important problem of how do we actually do uh, upgrades in a, you know, across these MIMS. So we have to make sure that, okay, these, uh, uh, when you're doing these upgrades, they have to be hitless in each of those MIMS. And they have to also make sure that the upper layer orchestrator can deal with different versions of these particular uh, VIMs. Okay? And of course, there's this generic orchestration overhead of basically how do we actually manage quotas across these various VIMs? Uh, how do we actually discover the resources across the VIMs? What is available, what is being used, and so on? And of course, uh, things like, you know, around uh, uh, we have multiple service endpoints now, and how do we actually manage uh, these endpoints using the NFE orchestrator? Now, some of these problems have been talked about. Even today, there were talk to presentations on uh, combining Tacker with, uh, I think it was Kingbird and uh, uh, TriCircle. Uh, we would like to watch how they evolve and we'd like to participate in some of those uh, activities and see uh, where these things go. And I understand Tacker is a little ahead on the VNF management side. It is still evolving on the uh, multi-site management side. Uh, and we understand that the, the, the projects like uh, Kingbird and uh, uh, TriCircle are still you know, in the process of in the new projects. They're evolving. Definitely would like to see participating in some of those activities to try to solve some of these issues. Yeah, I mean, there are still like, I mean, some of the like distributed quota management which you're talking about. There are so many VIMs, you have to manage the quotas, coming, coming with the consolidated quotas and showing up to the orchestration and talking about uh, even the image management across those VIMs. So, I mean, people are thinking uh, at this point, which are like a, a more uh, pain points about provisioning first, because we could see some examples where Tracker can now support multiple VIMs. Uh, but there are still areas where uh, user management is a big issue, mm -hmm. uh, quota management is another another issue, and then image, total image consolidation across those VIMs. Okay. So with, with this, I mean, uh, we, we almost, I mean, have not a complete solution to this problem, but there are a lot of mitigation plans, and uh, uh, there are some areas where we have to focus on and continue working on it and come up with the exact solution or right solution for uh, some of the uh, telco uh, uh, customers. So we are now opening up for opening up for basically questions and question and discussion yeah. points. Uh, thanks for the good presentation. Uh, actually, I have one question uh, regarding the mapping of VNFs on the data center. Do you have any idea about this? Uh, do you suggest that, let's say, control plane VNFs like uh, MME to be in the mothership uh, data center, while media or forward plane VNFs like PGW and so on to be pushed on the edge? This is the first thing. Second thing is, 
how this map to the 5G, let's say, uh, roadmap where we have MEC and mobile edge computing where we will push the compute to the, yes, at, I mean, at the end of the day, we will, will we have like hierarchy of the data centers? So we have data center and the, at the edge and data center in the region and data center in the center, something like this. So let me take the first one. I think we're talking about control plane related VNFs and the data plane intensive VNFs. Obviously in those situations you would deploy, have the NFE orchestrator uh, basically deploy your control plane VNFs which don't necessarily have high latency requirements, don't have to be co pretty close to the point of presence. They can be deployed on the main data centers. And of course the data plane intensive ones would be deployed in the, uh, uh, near the point of presence or central offices and so on. Your second question was about 5G. Could you please uh, elaborate? Are you talking about the how many tiers there? Yeah, Yanni, do you have any suggestion? What we understood that for the 5G, there is initiative called MEC, Mobile Edge Computing, where we will push the compute to the edge up to the RAN, maybe, mm -hmm. something like that. So to achieve end-to-end -end latency with uh, less than one millisecond for vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, or something like this. So. How it's mapped, uh, do you have any recommendation for this? Do you have any insights for this? No, I mean, something which we have heard while discussing with some telco operators about uh, the typical, I mean, packet core or some uh, some sort of those uh, VNFs would reside on uh, in a pop, right? So that is more closer to the, the customer edge. So is that what you're, uh, I mean, those type of things will be residing there. Yeah, but I mean, uh, okay, this is a general understanding. However, the question is still there, how you will, decide how many nodes you know, in, in terms of hierarchy, mm -hmm. how you will decide based on what, you will decide how many data centers will be and needed for that purpose. On, yeah. so no, Is I think there that any thing, working group? Uh, no, not that so we are aware of, but at so least. We are not yet plugged into that, but something we'd like to talk offline and, yeah. uh, and get to know more okay. about that. Yeah. And going back to the, the thing which you said about control plane versus VNF versus data plane VNFs, I mean, some of the things which we have seen in Tacker is you can put some descriptors, right? So while you're deploying that complete uh, VNF, you, you can specify that these are my data plane NICs, so it will use a uh, flag like availability zone called as micro DC, so it will go there and it get deployed. So that way, I mean, orchestration can do some level of intelligence based on the type of VNF it has. Okay. Thanks. Hey, thanks for the question. Thank you. Okay. No uh, other questions? Yeah, Thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much. Thank you.